Hi there, I'm Veldrin and welcome back to Dungeon Siege 3. So, we're in an old dilapidated temple, probably gonna have to solve some puzzles as well, and we're looking for the sacred words to open a passageway back in the abbey. And we're also trying not to die, of course. I'll try to focus a bit more on the uh, melee side of this character, see how well it works. As always, there are probably going to be a whole lot of trash fights. Most of them I'll just skip, but there are a few, uh... Well, the little spiders here, for example, they have a new attack that is a damage over time and ability. Which, surprisingly, deals a whole lot more damage than what I am capable of in terms of damage over time stuff. No, not surprisingly. Insultingly, I should say. I wish I could heal. Oh well, who needs healing when you can just kill things? That works surprisingly well. Massive burns cover this corpse, making it clear how the man met his end. That the body lies near the central altar rather than the walls of fire suggests a hidden danger in this room. Alright. This altar is almost empty, except for a large book. The book is open, but its pages are blank. A quill pen rests nearby. As Digglefitz suggested, this is probably the test that needs to be passed before the keystone may be obtained. Behind the altar, three intensely hot walls of fire impede your progress. Peering through the flames, you see a floating object, but it glows so brightly that you cannot determine what it is. As you lean forward to examine the book, letters begin to appear and flit across the page, forming sentences. It reads, As an eye's most faithful serve him not through brawn and blade, but through study, and by teaching others what they have learned. If you are ready to demonstrate this most holy devotion, then take the quill in hand. You suspect that you are not ready to pass this test. If you look around the temple, you may find out more about the Azanite faith. Well, we can actually try, you know. As you take up the quill, the writing on the page continues. Azanite has always kept watch over his faithful. Since the days before the Empire, one symbol has come to represent his unwavering devotion to us. Ah, that is from a while back where we learned about the broken shield. The word shift, yes. When his shield was broken, Azanai sacrificed his mortal life to protect all the peoples and tribes of the world. After a few moments, the text of the original question rearranges itself to form a new one. And I doubt we actually know the answer to this one. The faithful will adorn all manner of pools with candles, floating lights atop the water. Through this, we symbolize an essential belief. That makes no sense. Anything of this makes no sense. I don't know, let's just try something. As soon as you write your answer, the letters on the page sift violently before forming a new phrase. You have answered wrongly. Your penance shall be rendered in fire. I suspect that my character would be largely impervious to fire, but I doubt not. No, oh, that, that wasn't so dangerous. Well now, let's continue and uncover the secrets that we need to unlock that thing. Also looting. Isn't there loot over here? Come on, there should be loot. Why is this place empty? No enemies, nothing. Just some sad spiders. Such a disappointment for a girl. Yes, indeed. This is going to be one of those trap rooms. This is going yes, yes, of course. Nice architecture, though. I wish that the AoE range of that was just a we. No, 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 no. We wanted to attack those. Oh, bugger. Boom. I have no idea why my character wishes to veer off to the right. It's a bit stupid. Well, time to loot and I believe uncover one of these secrets that we need to venture forth through the fire. Should be over here. 
when our spirits leave the world of flesh and bone, we cross the divide in search of the river of souls. We would be lost if not for the guiding lights of Azanai shining upon the river's grey waters. Alright. Should be one more clue then. There were three walls of fire. And more trash mobs. Let's see whether we can just bunch them up. Because I believe there are also spiders here. No, nothing is this it. No. Oh. Hmm. Katarina's actually surprisingly adept at killing things. I don't think this is actually the part where we uncover another secret, but oh, with the halls of trial. The eyes of the oracle are hidden beyond this door, guarded by a series of tests. Heed the words of our sacred book, inscribed upon placards in the hall, and the way forward will be clear. Huh. So, trials one by one. I think we are supposed to light the braziers, in the proper order, of course. Alright. First among our... this is a bit much text, isn't it? I think it, uh, those were colors. So, in golden summer, second in blue winter, third in green spring. Okay. I don't actually remember what color was where, except for that blue was to the right. And because I'm slightly colorblind, I wouldn't even know what the other colors were. Perhaps this was the one to start? That's probably not going to be some sort of massive penalty. These are new, aren't they? I'm probably not going to want to get hit by those things. Other than that, they don't seem particularly threatening. Well, Katarina dies, but that's sort of normal. Well, these aren't the most interesting enemies. Very telegraphed attacks. Oh well. Did I loot that? Yes, I did. Ah, traps as usual are kind of pitiful. 175 damage. I'd have to stand in there. Those panels on the floor. Let us try stepping on them, yes? I hope that's not the entirety of the puzzle. The River of Souls has many tributaries, and as a nice fire shines upon them all, if our faith is strong, we shall walk upon them like roads, and they shall lead us to our rest. And of course, loot. Actually, I think just stepping on everything is the entirety of the entire puzzle. That's not a very challenging thing. Yep, that's exactly everything it was. Okay, those do actually do damage. No, 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 I don't want to be in range of them. I'm not sure the, whether there's a possibility to make Katarina more survivable. You can buff her block skill, but I'm not sure whether the AI is actually capable of using blocks efficiently. Oh, well, now that's pretty. I wish it would be possible to look up, but then I'd probably just see nothing. Or empty textures. <laughs> the two orbs are surprisingly heavy for their size. Pinpoints of light dance within the golden spheres. Staring at the patterns is oddly comforting and unsettling at the same time. Let's see, what were those for again? Ah yes, at the start we had a altar with two indentations. And those probably need these two orbs. 
But we're also going to have to find the third of the clues. So let's head back. Looks like the third thing is somewhere over here. With these gargoyles. What? Oh. You didn't really have to scream look out when you were just going to murder everything instantly. This text is a bit longer, it's just a bunch of flavor, so I'll give it to you separately. And this is much longer even, and it just talks about what Hathrao Eunuch did. I'll also give that separately. Does it actually count as a law piece? Now we know more about the Azulite faith. Enough to pass that test, I think. No, it doesn't actually count as a law piece, I think. Well, then I'm just going to have to screenshot it. Let's go back to the test room. And we are back, let's see. Pick up the quill, and then the faithful will adorn all manner of pools with candles. Heard it was the pool with the candles, yes, alright. As an eye is our guide. Again, the words shift indeed, for in death it is as an eye who leads us to the river of souls. Only one saint was both an emperor and a patriarch of the Asenite church. He spread the faith to countless multitudes, but he died a martyr's death. I think it would have been nice if there actually were still multiple options to answer, so that you'd actually have to read stuff that you find. And we have proven our knowledge of the faith. And the last wall of fire dissipates, opening a path to the strange floating object. The floating object emits a bright light, and you can't see exactly what it is, but when you reach for the object, the light winks out. The object drops into your hands, revealing itself to be an oddly shaped stone key. Despite its proximity to the fires, it is cool to the touch. Well now, that is one objective. Onwards to the boss, I think. With the orbs in hand. There are two smooth, rounded depressions in the stonework of this altar. Below them is an inscription carved into the stone. Yes, I think we already knew that. Place the eyes of the oracle. The orbs fit perfectly into the depressions. They begin to glow. Alright, this is going to be the third attempt. The first one with Katarina failed rather miserably, the second one with Lucas went a whole lot better, but I got a bit uh, unlucky. So, in between every respawn you're gonna have to kill all the trash mobs again, which is, to be honest, a nice opportunity to try and gain some focus as well as some of those power orbs. So that you're going into the battle at least a tiny bit better, hopefully. Look at that damage over time stuff they do, it's about a thousand or something. It's insane. Silly spiders. I'm not actually going into this fight very well. Oh well. First stage, gargoyles and statues. You can pretty much ignore the statues because they're way, way, way too slow. But gargoyles are pretty dangerous because they are ranged. On the other hand, they have very little HP. This is going nicely so far. And that's the boss. She also has multiple stages. Not entirely certain when the stages are, but that was one of the attacks she does. And she does that one a lot. It's orbs that follow you around pretty much to infinity. You have to block them. Well, you can dodge them around a bit, but really blocking is... Uh, more comfortable. Oh, she does the thing with the hands. When she waves around like that, those things are going to appear and you do not want to stand in them. And now we got two of those things. 
Ah, let's just catch them. We've got enough focus right now to do so. That's the hand thingy again. Oh. Oh no, there it is. And more orbs. The pedestals can actually, it would appear, block those things, but it doesn't happen a whole lot. Oh shit, 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 shit. I was not paying enough attention. Um, healing something else. Oh well, Lucas is very sturdy, and yeah, look at that. He can absorb so many of those things. Unlike me. And more of those things, and an orb, okay. As long as I have focus, I can block those things. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's the fire thing. Oh, the thing with the hands. Whatever. Oh, they just went past me. Okay, I'm cool with that. Actually, let's also try... Oh, Jesus. Yes, I want to get the cat out. Why? Because the cat can also... No, 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 not in the bloody fire. Because the cat is also capable of taking a few of the orb heads. I also would really like to have Lucas back. Okay, I do have focus now. She's doing the fire thing. Uh, can I do this? Can I do this? Yes, good. And the fire thing. This is a very tough fight, but I like it. Yeah, I dodged that. Hmm. Perhaps the orbs don't follow entirely to infinity, because sometimes I see them just exploding in the air, but really, they follow long enough to be bothersome. That's another one of those things. Yep. This should turn out nicely. Good. I think I once actually died at this point to the orbs still flying about. Sunbraze of Hathra Unok. Well, let's see how that looks then. Well, except for the agility, is a lovely thing, especially the willpower. And that is... I'm not actually sure whether that's left or right. I'm not really see... I don't really like this form in terms of equipment. This one is a lot more... Uh, they put a lot more effort into that. Anyway, let's continue. Let's see, is there any lo Oh, we needed this thing here, didn't we? This large stone tablet is clearly the centerpiece of the temple. To the Azanites who built this place, this must have been very important. The tablet is carved from high-quality marble and remains legible despite its age. Intricate patterns adorn its edges and its surface is engraved with the words of a sword recitation. You lift the tablet and place it in your pack. Ah, uh, must be the holy words that we were coming here for. And we only need, what was it, holy oil or something? Sacred oil, special oil. Anyway, there's another thing we need to get here. And that is some book for the goblinite side. So let's go and do that as well. Oh, there was actually, oh yes, of course, there was a level up during the boss fight, huh? Ah, uh, there's not a lot of interesting stuff left, is there? I think he only has something like shield wall. He has a better block value. No, actually, block value. Let's just do the uh, a reflective back on melee damage. I really don't trust the AI with block values. Didn't I also? Yes. <laughs> okay. Usually levels up, level up, uh, usually level ups are with both characters, not just for Lucas. But anything that I'm just doing now is mostly a bunch of healing. And the next semi-boss is also going to be very difficult. It's nice that they put some very difficult stuff in the DLC. 
Makes it more interesting. Come on, die already, silly spiders. That gargoyle in the middle there is going to be a massive nuisance. It's one of the few... Well, you'll see what it does. His large tome is the Chronicle of the Devout, a record of the Azanite community that built a temple and a vault. It contains many hundreds of entries written by High Priest Moloki, some even predating the construction of this temple. Though the pages are worn, the book is safe for transportation. You close it carefully and take it with you. And then we get murdered by that gargoyle. I'm not sure what the aura does, but the damn thing heals incredibly quickly and has poison attacks. And has area of effect. And Lucas is down. I'm not even sure whether there's any point to me spawning the uh, pet. The healing that that thing has is insane. Well, that actually went a lot better than I expected it to. Greenstone Talisman. That is probably very nice because I've never actually bought another talisman. Agility and stamina versus agility and armor and more agility. Yes, let's go for that. He's got armor and momentum. No, 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 Lucas. You don't need that. That's that's rubbish. Let's go to Lucas. Um, and you can have the swift one. All right, let's head outside and hand uh, the book to the goblin. Why, that's the chronicle! I wasn't certain it was actually real. It probably should have told you that beforehand, but uh, never mind. And look how thick it is! <laughs> Full of archaeological secrets, no doubt. Let the review committee laugh at me now. Here. A little something from my personal fortune, as promised, and my heartfelt thanks as well. Does he have anything else to say? I'll be sure to include you in the special thanks section of my next paper. Ah, oh, yes, acknowledgements in a footnote, probably. Alright, what do we have left to do in this desert? I think, yes, we need to find the oil and the eggs. Alright. Well, you know what, I think I've already been recording long enough, so let's call it a day for now, and then I'll see you next time. Have a good evening.